You've talked in many of your interviews about how you published three novels earlier in your career in the late 60s and, and, and early 70s. And then your fourth novel, The Lost Get Back Boogie, was rejected more than 111 times. Yeah. And, and, and I know you've talked about that experience um, before. Um, but I, I'm I'm curious. Can you still remember those years, the, those many years that you went without having a novel published? And 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 if you can, what what kept you going back to the typewriter every day? Well, th- that's a, a, a great question again, because you got it. It's you wonder when you go through those periods, particularly if they're in the middle of your career. It's like being uh broke twice and excuse me being rich twice and going broke <laughs> <laughs> but i went 13 years in the middle of my career when i couldn't sell ice water in hades and it was, it was, I, I amassed hundreds of rejection slips i used to keep them in a cardboard box and i was I told myself one day i'm going to autograph all these and sell them. <laughs> but the rejections were just sometimes awful, and particularly the Lost Get Back Boogie. It, that manuscript was not just rejected. It was flung at me with a catapult. It was vandalized. <laughs> it did. It had what looked like stab marks on it from ballpoint pens and rings where somebody had set, you know, his whiskey glass along the margins. But I had to have the whole thing <laughs> retyped finally. <laughs> but it made people mad for some reason. <laughs> and finally, LSU Press you know, brought it out, and it was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. But the point is, I, had, I relearned a lesson that I, I knew that I had learned as a young man and had forgotten. You do it every day for the pleasure and the love of writing. And of being a player, you're part of the action. It's like shooting craps. You just keep rolling the dice and, you know, box cars and snake eyes come up. And then finally you throw in 11s and 7s. It's a matter of time. But I learned that lesson when I was 20 years old. And I was sending off my first short stories. And I worked for a little while on an offshore exploration barge, uh, uh, what's called a doodle bug rig. And I worked 10 days on the water, five days off. When I'd get off the hitch, I would put all my, my, I'd write for five days back on the shore. And then I'd put all my work in the mail and send it to magazines. I had a rented post office box. My rejections would be waiting for me when I got off of the next hitch. But I learned a lesson. You never give up, and I never keep a manuscript at home longer than 36 hours, a day and a half, and it's back under submission. You just wear them down, and you don't <laughs> keep score. I, you know, a Franciscan theologian told me this. Don't keep score, Jim. He said, the score will take care of itself. Bear down on the batter one pitch at a time, and toward the bottom of the ninth, look over your shoulder, and you'll be pleasantly surprised at the arithmetic on the scoreboard. I never forgot that statement. That's it. You just never quit. I call it Richard Nixon syndrome. You just keep <laughs> hanging around. And finally someone says, oh, give the guy the White House, will you? <laughs> <laughs> 